we have worked with the EU and we are very happy about the project because we started off in 2003 by developing the Women's Manifesto for Ghana. Yeah. And through that we got support from JIRA, which was the first uh, basket fund for civil society. Mm -hmm. And then from that we moved on to develop the Women's Manifesto for Ghana, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you've seen a copy already. Yeah. It covers a lot of different areas. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that has been like the uh, roadmap mm -hmm. with which we are working on gender issues in this country. Mm -hmm. And so we got... For civil society. For civil society. Civil mm -hmm. society. It's a civil society document, mm -hmm. but everybody, I mean, people in parliament, government official, everybody makes reference to it. Mm -hmm. And the landscape on women's rights issues have changed dramatically since then. So the EU is supporting us to implement an affirmative action project. And we are in the final, it was a three year program and we are in the last year of implementation. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say that we have collaborated effectively with the Ministry of Women's and Children's Affairs and other civil society organizations through the Women's Manifesto Coalition, mm -hmm. which we host here as Abantu mm -hmm. and we've got into a stage where uh, a committee has been put in place to draft an affirmative action a bill mm -hmm. that would then serve as the basis for further consultation and hopefully the passage of an affirmative action law or policy. And the bill is still, it's already been uh, adopted? It's in the, no, it's in the process so of being developed and we are hoping that this year we can move the process forward because during the electioneering campaign all the uh, uh, presidential candidates spoke about their commitment to women's rights issues and even the president himself said affirmative action is something he would like to work on so, so we have to hold him accountable okay. to his promise mm -hmm. And the idea was really to sort of raise awareness on these issues and then... It was a number of idea, uh, objectives. First of all, we were thinking about giving an agenda for policy makers. Because you know, much of the time when political parties are campaigning, they will say that, oh, we can't find the women. Meanwhile, women are in their political parties. We can't find the women. We don't know what women want. So we felt that if we had an agenda for women, then nobody can have the excuse and say that we don't know what women want. Mm. So that was the number one issue. Then two, we wanted a common platform that women can use to strengthen their own voices and to advocate on their issues. So mm. it serves as a platform that we use because if you want to talk to any woman on an issue, you can make reference to the Women's Manifesto. Mm -hmm. And because it's a platform, then we have the coalition also and the host, the Secretariat. So if you need information about women, you could come here or any of the member organizations and they will talk mm -hmm. to you about women's rights issues. And then also, we wanted to uh, establish the fact that we know what we want. So if you look at the manifesto, there are 10 critical areas of concern and each of the issues are discussed from a national perspective mm -hmm. and then we bring in the gender dimension which suggests therefore that we not, women are not thinking about themselves alone mm -hmm. it's not about identity politics it's about the nation as a whole mm -hmm. and what the different needs and concerns are and then we make demands as to what should be done so you'll find out that we demanded for the passage of the domestic violence law, we demanded the passage of the Trafficking Act and the Disability Act, all of this is contained in the Women's mm -hmm. Manifesto. So even though not all the demands have been met, consistently you can see that the thinking of women mm -hmm. is actually really uh, uh, making some changes happen in the mm -hmm. country. What is the biggest achievement so far within this project? Uh, I think the biggest achievement so far has been uh, the increased sensitivity, mm. the increased sensitivity of a number of critical media institutions 
on gender issues and on the issues contained in the Women's Manifesto. And it is exemplified in many ways. For instance, during the elections, many of the critical media institutions gave space and voice to women. Mm -hmm. If you take the daily graphic, you will find out that they gave free spaces for all the women who were standing for elections to be profiled. And I think that is very significant. And this is not only because of this project, but because of the work we've been doing since the inception of the Women's Manifesto. Mm -hmm. So the specific first project with Star Ghana is a catalyst mm -hmm. in the sense that the thing already exists, but then it increases the momentum. What is the biggest challenge? In terms of challenge, I think keeping the coalition vibrant. Because much of the time, when it comes to funding, mm -hmm. there's very little money for institutional building or institutional mm -hmm. strengthening. So you will find out that you are not able to hold too many meetings. You are not able to engage often with your membership. And even mm -hmm. when you have membership meetings, because some members live in the remotest corners of the country and if you, you, you have to go there or they have to come to Accra, it requires resources. So that is a major challenge, the ability to sustain the coalition through constant communication and all of that. So we try as much as possible to use uh, ICTs a lot. Mm -hmm telephone calls, test messages. That's why I said mm -hmm. uh, ICT is a cross-cutting mm -hmm. issue because without that, we'll not be able to maximize resources mm -hmm. to get the work done.